I am going to tell you, we're going to be going and diving into a video. It's a hybrid video, uh, hybrid webinar again this week. So Ian and I last week got together and we recorded uh, a nice overview of all of the tools that we are talking about. All right, we are thrilled to be joined by Ian Anderson Gray, the one and only, all the way from London, England, who's who's up with us late. What time? It's nearly your bedtime, isn't it, Ian? It is nearly nine o'clock. It is. It's technically not London, but you know the UK's. Oh, sorry, you are outside of London. How far outside of London are you? It's it's about four hours journey. So we're, I'm in Manchester. In okay, the Manchester. There we go, Manchester. So by the sea. The, the, you you must have been very proud when they won the Academy Award. Didn't they win the Oscar? Uh, I have no Manchester idea. by the Sea. It won the, t uh, the I, Oscar I, last year I, for the best movie. I, I don't know. It's a, I, I it was about get, you. I, I don't get out very much. You know, uh, we've got young kids. What can I say? <laughs> all right. Ian Anderson Gray. We are going to be spending some time now talking about live streaming. Now, Ian is like me. He's a tools guy. Actually, uh, I might tease him a little bit as we move along because a recent convert to the Mac, you were always, you got to use Windows. you got to use Windows for everything in the past. But now you're, you're, you're on the Mac now. Although for streaming tools, there's some brilliant tools on the Windows side yeah. as well. So, uh, so let's kind of walk through the toolkit uh, to start with. First of all, when people are considering setting up for streaming, do they have to consider the platform that they're streaming for? Do they have to consider if they want to be on Facebook Live or if they want to be on Instagram Live? And, and does that make a difference in the hardware and software setup that you're going to have in order to yeah. support it? Okay, yeah, so it does. Why? Well, I mean, for, for one thing, Instagram Live is currently only on the mobile platform. So you you can only do that from the official Instagram app. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing. And, so, you know, all the, all the different tools out there, they all um, support different platforms. So, I mean, one of them, which we, we can talk about Ecamm Live, is only for technically only for Facebook, although they've got some new features coming in their beta version. And uh, and then BeLive.tv is only for Facebook. So you've got to kind of think, well, where you know, where am I want to go? Where, where do I want to go live with? And then you've got to think about the the tool that will fit the purpose there. And uh, look at your system, whether you're going to be doing it from a, a desktop or from a uh, your mobile phone or, or whatever. So yeah, lots of things to think about. Well, for the purpose of our conversation today, let's start with, I guess, the elephant, which is, I think Facebook Live is the dominant player in the space right now. Most people are interested in that. Um, you know, yeah. kind of second tier is Instagram Live. YouTube Live is there, but it's it's kind of got it yet to find its feet. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of a, in, in the YouTube creators community, but not in, as much in the general community. And then there's a whole bunch of other vertical live options, like what we're doing right now, this webinar, as far as I'm concerned, is a, is a form of live streaming. So uh, not it, it is a form of live streaming. Yeah, uh, yeah. But typically speaking, when we're talking about this, we're talking about the, the, uh, the stream fed uh, or the stream delivered lives such as in Facebook. So what is the ideal setup for Facebook? It used to be we had to use our smartphone in order to stream on Facebook, but no more. Well, I think for, for if you're starting out with live video, I, I do recommend starting on on your smartphone. It's the easiest way. It's 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 a case of, you know, you've, as long as you've got a decent, a recent smartphone for iOS or you know like a, an iPhone or an Android phone, you're good to go. And you can even bring in a guest as well now with Facebook Live on on your phone. So there's a few, you know, it, it's not as uh, limiting as it used to be in the past so you can do some cool things uh, on your phone but then i think if you want to take things to the next level i think you want to look at it from your desktop or your laptop because there are so many extra possibilities uh, with that so you can definitely bring in guests you can have a co-hosted show you can have graphics and branding you can use your professional kits you know if you've got a, a webcam or a microphone you can use that and it doesn't need to be the high-end stuff it can just be your standard webcam and microphone and you can produce some really really great results with that so so if we start right by looking at that mobile setup if people are mm. setting up with, and, and they are going to just smart uh, to start dabbling their feet in live streaming so they're going to use their smartphone they're going to take advantage of you know the fact that it's built into the ios or android app um, they really don't need anything else. They can just grab their phone, they can hold it up, and they can start yep. the broadcast. Uh, so let's. So as far as I think, when people will recognize immediately that that is that you know that you are broadcasting from your smartphone, you're going to be in in portrait format uh, for the most part. Most people are going to hold their phone that way. I think, aren't they? Most people are streaming in well, portrait I, now. Yeah, it, it, 
it, in, in, there are disadvantages and advantages with both. I mean, the advantage with doing it portrait is that you, if most people are watching on their smartphone, you, most of the screen is going to be your video. So that's yeah. the big advantage. But the, the disadvantage is if you want to bring in guests on Facebook Live currently, at least, um, if you start in portrait and you bring in a guest, your guest will appear as a little thumbnail on the top right. Okay. Whereas if you start landscape, you get the, the proper split so screen. Split screen. Okay. So if you're solo, it's fine to be portrait. And it actually works better in the feed for most for the most part. Uh, yeah. But if you're if you're gonna have a guest on, then going landscape is better. Now the biggest thing that I issue I always have is I always say that audio is more important than video yes. in, in our yeah. delivery. And so relying on the microphones on our smartphones. What's your best, what's your recommendation as far as that's concerned? Well, I've got, I don't know whether you can see this, but I've got uh, one of these little things here. This yeah. is the, this is the Rode Lavi, I can never the pronounce Rode, it. So. The Rode Lavalier. Lavalier Plus. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> that one. And uh, the only thing, is, this, this works really well with, with the iPhone. Android users beware because uh, when I tried this on my Nexus 6P, it didn't, it didn't work. I think you have to get a special adapter for that. But that really enhance, enhances the quality. Um, what I will say, if you're gonna do a guest interview, I learned this the, the hard way. So I, I tried this for my phone. I brought a guest in. My audio was amazing, but I couldn't hear what my, what my guest was saying. Sure. Because when you plug this in, it's, it's, it then blocks your audio. So I, uh, what, what I did is I got one of these, uh, little adapters from road which is the I think it's the SC6 and what this does is it gives you you can plug two of the two of these microphones two labs in, in. yeah okay yeah and then and then you can plug your earphones into that so uh, that is a good thing to have in your kit definitely and there's also some really nice kind of field recorder options that they have crossing yeah. microphones I know that uh, there's a variety I think road has them that will plug in and they plug in typically now into the lightning port on the on the new yeah. iPhones, and I imagine that they plug into the earphone jack in the in the Android world, as yeah. far as that goes. So that allows you, but that also allows you to do things like recording concerts and other things. So if you're recording music and stuff, that's going to give you a better option as far as that goes. Yeah. Uh, but definitely, if you you know if you can improve the quality of the audio, I think that that is well worth the effort. You know, especially if you're going to be like looking at this long term, because you know, if your if your audio sucks, people just are, they will turn turn away. It's it, it's it's interesting. Our ears just are more sensitive yeah. organs. It, it's funny, you know, people can forgive slightly dodgy video. I mean, obviously, it's good if your video is good quality, but they can forgive that. But if they can't hear you, they're just not going to. Yeah, they're just not going to stay it. for long. Yeah, they? exactly. It, it, and it and it gets really frustrating at that point there. So that's I, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say one other thing that's really important here, and this is going to be particularly important for desktop, but I will mention it for smartphone, and that is your internet connection uh, is really, really important here because in, if you're trying to do it on a, like a slightly dodgy 3G connection, uh, Facebook is going to compress the quality of the audio and the video down a lot, and so the quality is going to be really bad, and you might find that you disconnect um, from from the feed. So before you go live, I always recommend just test your speed. Uh, you can download, I don't know what you use, Steve, but I, I use the speedtest.net app and I just, uh, I've got that installed and I'll do a quick speed test before I go live on my smartphone. And you're looking for to get a decent feed, I would recommend at least three or four megabits per second upload speed. As a as a bare minimum, really, to, to to get a good quality. Do you ever use the Do you ever use the cellular network as opposed to always going Wi-Fi, or do you often use your mobility network as well? Well, I mean, these days I, I tend to go live from my desktop, but if I'm out and about, uh, if I'm on 4G, it's generally fine. 3G, kind of dodgy usually. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it kind of depends. I think you need to kind of test it beforehand. And and the other thing that you can do. If you just really want to, if it's really important, do a quick test live. So on, if you go live on, on your Facebook profile, just change the privacy uh, settings to only me, from public to only me, and just go live for like 30 seconds to, and then watch it back. Yeah, because um, it'll record it and you can watch it back and then you could delete it. Well, that's a yeah. good tip, and a lot of people have multiple Facebook pages that they could probably do it with too. They've got like yeah, I've that's... got I've got a page of something that I started that I never use for anything except to run tests now. 
Yeah. yeah, and I don't yeah. want anybody to find it. I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> we're, we're all going to be searching for it now. <laughs> okay, so I, now if you are going to be delivering more comprehensive content, you're going to be doing more tutorial type stuff or more scheduled, then the opportunity to go from your desktop, uh, the quality that you're going to get from your desktop is, I think, far more valuable at that point there than the immediacy and the viral nature of being live and whatever. So let's talk about an ideal desktop setup. Now, is it really the same as a webinar setup or even a screencasting setup? It's very similar. Very, very similar. Uh, and it kind of depends on you know, what level you're wanting to go at. I'm, I'm a big fan of the you know, bootstrapping this, you know, start off small and then over time you can, you can start to add extra bits to it. So you don't have to start off with, you know, necessarily like a big expensive professional video camera. You can start off with a decent webcam and, and then over time, if you want to upgrade that, then do. Uh, but yeah, I, I, if you've got it, the, the main thing is that you need to have a, a relatively powerful computer. I've heard many people trying to do live streaming from their computer and they, they end up struggling because they their computer just isn't powerful enough. So we have to probably get a little bit geeky here. Yeah, I think we should. I so, think it's important to, so to, let, to kind of at least know the minimum specs. So let's start with this first. So let me first of all, what camera are you using right now on your on so your... Yeah, so I'm using a Logitech uh, uh, C920. And Which is the exact that, same camera I'm using. Same camera yeah. I've used for five years. Uh, yeah. It's the most affordable camera. So for streaming of this quality, it's still the standard. And it's like $70 US yeah. or less on, on, on Amazon type thing. So that's still the standard. What's your mic setup right now? Uh, so I'm not over, I, I'm, not, I'm happy with it, but it's one that I want to change at some point. I've got the Blue Yeti USB okay. microphone, which, so, is, which is fine. It, it's, it's fine. And I, th I think the important thing with the Blue Yeti is that it gets a few complaints from people because it tends to uh, pick up a lot of background noise. But I think the important thing is to, to come close to the microphone and put the gain pay down. A, and pay, pay close attention to the manufacturer specification. You're even, I would say, a little bit far away. I would, if I was setting yep. you up, I would probably recommend you even have the gain down a little bit and have it a little bit closer, uh, just because then you get yep. a lot more depth of depth of audio. But that's yep. the key to that. That's the key to that mic. And most of the viewers know I've got a pro setup as far as my mic. So I've got a, an Electro Voice RE20, which is a studio microphone going through a, yep. a an, an analog to digital converter uh, in, yep. into my system. Um, but now let's talk about this. Let's talk about what happens as far as the stream goes and why a powerful computer is important because this is really important. Um, and, and I'll start and then you can kind of fill in. But the, mm. to me, the, the important thing to understand is when you're watching a video on YouTube or anything that's stream, usually streaming online, what happens is that video is compressed, it's built, and then it's uploaded to YouTube or to the service. And then they compress it and, and, and optimize it for streaming and then they serve it from there. When you're doing it from your desktop, this live stream that we're doing right now, for example, what has to happen is our computer has to capture the video, it has to encode it, prepare it to upload, and it has to do all of the compression. And it can't squeeze the file down small enough to make it squeeze through a smaller pipe going upstream. And typically speaking, we have a smaller pipe going upstream to the internet than we do download. We do a lot less broadcasting than we do receiving. Think Netflix. We're receiving, we're not broadcasting. So we've got limited bandwidth going up, and now we're trying to put un compressed or moderately compressed video through that. The more compression that your computer can apply to that, the cleaner the quality of video going up and the easier it's going to be to distribute. Uh, I don't did, 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 Does that kind of resonate with you as far as a good way to explain it? Yeah, I think that's a really good way of explaining it because it it always seems kind of magical what yeah. happens. We don't, we don't think about it. And uh, then we, th then when it doesn't work, we think, well, why, why isn't my computer powerful enough to, to do Facebook Live? Yeah. And we forget how much is actually going on underneath the, you know, the computer. So Yeah, as a matter of fact, yeah. just, uh, I was thinking about that. I was thinking, holy cow, I've been streaming with you for a little while here and I haven't turned up the fan because I've got a fan that I wanted to, because <laughs> my computer's working harder in processing and it had reached 50 degrees as I just looked up. So that's talking about how the computer has to work in order to compress it. So you do need a powerful computer. So question then, why do the phone, does it do an okay job off the phone, which has a far less powerful tool, a compression engine, than my computer? Is that, is that a question you're going to answer? Or no, I answer? don't know. <laughs> well, it's a good question. I, and it's one that I have thought about, but not looked into in, in any great detail. I, I think that Facebook, um, they compress it 
very very well on the phone so and they've they the 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 kit the technology in a phone is geared towards mobile video um and there's a delay there's a significant delay when you go from your phone too Uh, there's probably more of a delay i'm not positive about that but there's there's definitely delay okay so that's so now as far as hardware is concerned you know, we've talked through kind of the, 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 the fact that you need a good quality setup. Of course, having good lighting is going to help. Now let's yeah. start talking about the software options because that's really what I wanted to get you on to kind of showcase because mm. you have been playing with and teaching people to use a variety of these different software tools for a while. So talk to me about tools that help other than just using this, the Facebook desktop app to help stream yeah, okay. at a higher quality. So, so give me your list of favorite tools. Just before I say that, I will say it's important from a hardware point of view Make sure you've got, if you can, if you have a, an i7 processor, that's really important because that, that's going to, I've heard a lot of people trying on an i5 and they, it struggles a bit. So if your, process, if your computer has an i7 and ideally 16 gigabytes of RAM, I just, I'm just saying that because yep. if you've got less than that, you're going to struggle. More so is better. More is better. And actually, you know, you mentioned about Mac and PC. I, you know, let's not get into which one's better. Um, now, but I, I think in, in one sense, it's going to be if you're starting again from scratch, there are advantages and disadvantages with both. Uh, with a PC, it's obviously going to be cheaper to get a high um, specification PC uh, than it is for a Mac. I had to when I went to a Mac last last year, I had to go for a really high end Mac in order to cope with what I what I wanted to do with live video. So just bear that in mind. And some of the apps that I'm going to recommend, some of them across cross platform and some of them are either mac only or pc only so you just need to bear that in mind um so i think the simplest way to start when it comes to facebook live is actually the the web app be live.tv uh in the you know, maybe six months ago and before that it got a bit of slack as, as being maybe a little bit buggy um i think it was i think it's really improved in recent months and be live is they have a free plan, um, but the the paid version it starts from twelve dollars per month, and it's you you basically go live directly through your browser. So it it's um, it's very very easy to use, and the the thing I love about Be Live is how easy it is to bring in guests and to highlight comments on the screen. So it is only for Facebook Live. It doesn't work with with YouTube or any of the other platforms. And uh, but it's a very, very easy way just to bring in a guest. You just give them a web link and you can uh, you've got a choice of there are different shows. So I could actually probably best to show you my screen, actually, and, and show you this. Is that is that a good idea? That's a great idea. OK, so ho- hopefully can you see that? Yep, we're getting it. OK, so when you log into to be live, you've got the option for a solo show, an interview show and a talk show. And it's really important to make sure you choose the right one, because once you choose this, you can't then change it later, which I learned the hard way from. So obviously, solo show is just you. An interview is you and one other guest. And uh, you can uh, uh, you can swap between the two of you. You can be split screen or you can be full um, or full screen your guest or you uh, your guest or you. And then talk show allows you to have up to two guests and uh, you can also bring in people from the uh, from the actual comments. So you could hand out the the, the link and get people in. And that's the first time that you can do screen sharing, which might be a real boon. As yeah. far as yeah, yeah, you can do screen sharing on that. Uh, and so it's great. It's really really easy to do. I click on start broadcasting. I'll choose talk show. So then I've got the choice of either my own timeline. That's my profile. Uh, a page, a group, an event, or I can test it. Okay. So, let's just, so that's quite good. So let's just do that. Um, this is, uh, and then you've got the choice. To, you, you can create a scheduled live, scheduled live Facebook live broadcast. With Facebook Live, you can do this up to a week in advance. Um, and I do recommend that you do schedule things a week, as far in advance as possible, so that you can do a lot of promotion um, in the meantime. So it's much uh, more like a webinar at that particular point. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you've got the choice uh, of adding your own branding. So if I click on add your own branding, uh, I've already added some logos here. So I can just add this, my, the, my <laughs> cheesy photograph there on the right hand side. Or that's the free range social show there. Um, and then go to brand colors. I've got the choice of the red color for me or for my other show, the green. Um, so you can add your, your nice. branding there and you even do 
I mean, I don't do this, but if you really want kind of these. No, don't do <laughs> so, that. Yeah. Thank you. I, I, I'm glad you agree with me. Um, so you save the branding and then you create the broadcast. Um, so it's uh, and when you do that, they give you a link uh, and you just say 20 minutes, 30 minutes before you go. The, the show is scheduled to go live. You go on there, you set your webcam up and bring in your guest and and go for it. And, and the other great thing is you can highlight people's comments on the screen. So you can you can see people's Facebook, Facebook comments on the right. You can click on those and highlight those on the screen. And the other thing I like about BeLive is the way that you can add, uh, you can actually create an agenda. Now I can't show you this at the moment, but um, you create an agenda for the show. So say for example, yep. you've got three points you want to make. You just type all those ahead of time and then you can bring those in as titles throughout the show. Very nice. So that's really, really good. So, so it's, that, it's just so easy. So that to me is one of the best reasons that you've said to use a tool like BeLive versus using the native tool. If we look at what happens in a Facebook Live broadcast, is the more interaction and the more authority that you can generate from the comments, the more social proof that you can generate from the comments, I think the more valuable a broadcast is. And the fact that BeLive is concentrating on making sure that you have some tools to celebrate the comments and so that to, to manage yes. the conversation with your community, I think that's a real strength. So that's a really good tip. Absolutely, yeah, and that's one of the things I love about uh, BeLive. Some of the, all the other tools or most of the other tools, it is possible to do some of those things but it's just a bit more difficult. So yeah, just I'm looking at the disadvantages about BeLive. So obviously lots of positive things, but the disadvantage is that you can't save the, the video. Uh, BeLive doesn't actually save a, a high quality video of it. You have to go to Facebook uh, it, itself and download the video. And unfortunately, Facebook, the, the downloading feature is not that great. So the quality you get afterwards is pretty poor in in my experience it's it's not it's not even it's not 720p it's sometimes it's like 360p so uh yeah another another tool that you could look at which is in the same kind of category as this so in the web app category is one called golightstream.com or lightstream.com i would describe this as kind of it's it's like be live on steroids or wirecast light and at the moment it is completely free uh, i'm not sure how long that's going to go on for it's a lot of these apps are aimed at gamers a lot of i mean i'm not really into gaming i don't have the time to game but um a lot of gamers like to live stream and uh to the likes of twitch or youtube and and get some interaction from their their friends and followers uh so Lightstream is aimed at that and with with that in mind they've tried to reduce the latency of the video yeah. now what that means is the, the, it's the time between you playing the game and actually going live. Yeah, it, so, so um, going back to the live stream, it integrates with Twitch, which is popular with the gamers, Facebook Live, YouTube, YouTube Live, and Mixer, which I've never used. But the great thing with um, Lightstream is it allows you to bring in guests. You can give them a, a, a link. You can have multiple cameras. You can bring in videos because that's one thing that another ah. thing that um, BeLive doesn't allow you to do to bring in a video or audio. Which um, which for our community is incredibly valuable. That's what this video yep. is right now. Is a, so doing a um, hybrid delivery. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you could get around that with BeLive if you start to get geeky and use virtual webcams. But you know, it's it's yeah. it's kind of using the tool in a way that it wasn't really, you know, created to do. So, I, I, go, uh, Lightstream allows you to do a lot more. You 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 can add. You can see at the bottom there that you can add different scenes. So yeah. Scene one could be your pre-show shot. Um, Scene two could be your your opening video. Scene three could be split screen with you and your guest, uh, and scene four could be sharing a screen. Nice. Um, so so there's loads of things you can do. This is getting onto the. I like this. Is this is a bit like Wirecast or OBS, and at the moment it it's free. Now there is, after on <laughs> with all of these tools, there's all there's always there are always downsides, and at the moment I think um, they haven't seen this as a as a priority but it doesn't allow you to schedule broadcasts. Okay. It's only straight away. And the reason for that is because it's for the gaming community. But the more people that tell them that um, they want scheduling, the more likely they are going to do it. I, I know that they are looking at this for the future. So 
let's just watch this space. Okay, good stuff. I like this one. As the the uh, the, the traditional producer in me likes the likes this structure. Yes. Yeah. 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 And and I think as, as we go through these these tools, you'll see more of this. You'll see these yeah. scenes and, and the way you can switch between the different ones. So yeah, so that, so that we've looked a lot at web apps, and there are these kind of hybrid apps, which um, such as uh, Zoom. Or uh, you, I think you were mentioning, Steve, that yep. uh, Webinar Jam, and then there's Crowdcast. There's all these kind of tools that are either traditional video chat webinar services or yeah. webinar services, webinar or meeting and, tools. Yeah, yeah, and then now offering as a kind of an add-on or, or integrated the ability to um, to broadcast that webinar or that video that video chat that you're you're doing to the likes of Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Yeah. Um, so you you could look at those. I mean, Zoom. I use Zoom a lot. Zoom uh, is a good one have, for it. Yep. You do have to pay for the webinar add-on, which is around forty dollars per month extra to get uh, to get the Facebook Live and YouTube Live option. And the downside with that is that it plunks a big uh, Zoom logo on the top right so from a branding point of view it's not great um but if you're if you're going to be using zoom to or crowdcast or whatever webinar jam to do your webinar and you want the ability to broadcast to youtube or, or facebook then you know it makes sense to do that and ian i will i will give you one other downside is that the uh, the um managing the conversations is somewhat spotty uh, in yeah. those, it's, it's harder to manage the conversation. So if you're doing it as a presentation, it's fine. But if you're engaging in the conversation, you really almost have to have uh, a person auditing the Facebook feed to take a yes. look at the comments to see what you're missing because you'll miss some comments uh, using the in, in the native tool as opposed to Facebook. They all don't make it back and forth through all the time, or at least not in my experience, they haven't. Yeah, yeah, and that is, and it, it, this is going to be a problem when you start to look at multicasting so this is the when yeah. you look at uh broadcasting say youtube facebook and also if you if you then got a webinar within webinar jam you've got multiple comments in, in and if you do periscope oh my goodness you're gonna have all these it's gonna be like um yeah you know the, your wall your wall is gonna be covered in screens you know? yeah and, and, uh, and there's in managing the conversations would will become a nightmare that's gonna be a big issue because so much social proof and so much value comes out of the chat I mean the way that we record our webinars here we always insist on having the chat role happening all the time because it adds so yeah. much energy and it validates the content ta content on screen so effectively yeah yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. So, so you got this kind of—I uh, don't know really what to call them. I call them the kind of the hybrid app. It's the app that's not really intended for live video, but it has that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the next, the next, the next level are the downloadable apps, the desktop apps, and uh, the one I wanted to to make give a big shout out to is one called Ecom Live. Now, sorry, PC users, this is because I feel your pain being a PC user for twenty years. I used to hate when this happened, but don't worry. There's some good goodness coming. <laughs> so um, Ecamm Live is for Mac only. Um, and uh, I've just loaded it up. I don't know whether it's doing anything. But Ecamm Live is um, the, the, the ridiculous thing about Ecamm Live is it's only $30. It's just mad. I don't know how they get it to, to be that cheap. Um, let's just get rid of that and 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 get rid of that so yes so that you can see on the screen that so i'm using the the beta version and i wanted to talk about the beta version of ecom live by the way just a second got... i just want to do a translation when he says beta he means beta oh sorry yeah 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 <laughs> well did you i don't know if you noticed i was i was correcting my my use, use of the word schedule to schedule that so, yeah. there you go wait wait, so wait I, a minute I, 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 Way to take one for the team, Ian. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I struggle with beta. I, I, yeah. I, anyway, right. So, um, Ecom Ecom Live, the beta version, beta version is going to have the ability to bring in guests, uh, which is awesome. So, if you use the e Ecom's other software, the Ecom Call Skype Call Recorder, you can just bring somebody in uh, from Skype. Um, so. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but if I if I go to a new scene here, so if yeah, I we go might to... Be, we might be challenging things because we have a Skype call. We're recording this in a Skype call right now. Yeah, so this isn't this isn't working at the moment. Um, but uh, this this what I've done here is I've put an overlay, a, a graphic overlay, and then behind it, 
if I was speaking to somebody and I could see that video, you would be able to see them behind that. Uh, and we could put my webcam on the left hand side. And uh, so let's have a look what I can do here. Let's put my webcam there. So that's currently, let's do this. Uh, da, da, da. Shift click and there we go. So you've got me there on the left and you've got my, my guest feed, there. My, right. Which is my feed. Now I'm not which using that feed. camera. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not yeah. feeding camera feed to you, but yeah, that, my face would be there. So, so you can see how easy that was to do. Um, and the other thing with, with the, new, the new version of Ecamm is, you, you, I don't know if you can see this on the left-hand side, but I've got um, scenes here. So I've got my pre-show scene yeah. shot, which is command one. So if I do command one, I go there. Uh, there is a countdown timer, so you can add countdown timers. I've then got uh, an intro, uh, intro shot there, then my split screen, and then just me. Uh, that's it's not currently working at the moment, but you get the idea. Yep. Um, and you can just if you want to add videos, it's just a case of dragging the video into the into the, uh, now, the is window. Is that video a web video or is it served from your computer? Served from your computer. Okay, so much like about... what Zoom would do. So it's you've got an, the issue of uh, you don't have the benefit of having a really good compressed video online. No, but that's a good point, and I wonder whether that's. I mean, they, they've been really listening to the community Good. i mean if you go to if you go to the facebook uh, group they've got a ecom live beta group uh go in there and and uh just tell them what you think and you know they're, they're adding loads of extra features there's the ability to to now stream in 1080 and also the other thing is it records uh as well at the same time so you've got really high quality uh, video afterwards nice and the other thing which I can't show you now because I'm not currently broadcasting a live video. The other thing about this is the live com the comments actually will appear um, on the screen and you can bring them in. So you can click on it and bring bring that comment highlighted on the screen as well. All right. So that's so those are the I, I sense that we've kind of reached the end of the uh, of the inexpensive quasi amateur tools and we're going to step now into the realm of the professional yeah well almost almost this the next one is kind of it is professional but it has the added bonus that it is free yeah. and this is how this is i've got a lot of love for this tool because this is how i started i'm going to feel all all nostalgic now and i'm going to load up obs studio so obs studio is available for Macs and PCs and even Linux users. So if you're a hardcore Linux user, you can use OBS Studio. So for pe so people uh, know OBS stands for Open Broadcast Studio. Yes. It's a, I don't know, it's a slightly unfortunate name, but yeah, it's yes, <laughs> OBS it's, Studio. It does sound like a, yes. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> but yeah, um, so it, it's, it's, it's an amazing tool considering it's free. Um, there are disadvantages with it. It's it's it. The learning curve is is a little bit. You well, know, let's there is let's a actually curve. take a step back in because this one and Wirecast are a class of tool which is a broadcast studio that lives on your computer. Very different than all the others, which are purpose built for streaming to streaming to services that we've talked about, or even a webinar tool. This tool and Wirecast, which Ian's going to be talking about in just a few moments, are tools that are designed to replicate a switcher in a mobile yeah. control room. So they're designed to great grab content from multiple sources, mix it together, and then broadcast it out, and then spit it out in a stream. Now it doesn't care where it's going to. It could be going to a it could be going to a TV show. It could be going to a live stream uh, video product. Product. It, be, it could be going to an on on air stream, or it could be being recorded by a digital video recorder. It doesn't matter. What it's doing is it's doing all of the assembly that you would see like at a football game or a sports game that you'd be doing in a in a remote truck. It's one of it's a so it's a very advanced tool from that perspective. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, and so yeah, it, it does have the ability you can choose where where you can go live any way you like, and you don't even need to. You can just use this to save video as well. Yeah. Um. So so if you go to the settings uh, to uh, part of uh, menu, uh, and then go down to the stream option, you can see here under streaming services, uh, you've got um. Facebook Live, Restream.io, Twitter Periscope, those are the main ones. But you can go live um, you buy to anywhere just by selecting custom streaming server and you can do whatever you like. There. And you type in the stream key. And the output you could also record to a to like a digital recorder. So you could be using it to record video that you're going to store and then forward later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, you can, as well as streaming it, you can also uh, save it as well. So 
Uh, you can choose, so for, for example, the recording here. I'm going to save this in my movies folder. I can choose what uh, recording format, so MP4 or MAV or FLV. Um, so you can stream and and uh, save the vi record the video at the same time, which is cool. Um, so yeah, uh, so the, the, it works as you say, Steve. With you, you, it's a switcher between different different scenes. So I've got uh, different scenes here. I've, they're probably not going to work at the moment, but uh, let's go to scene three. I can just add here at my webcam. So if I go to video capture device, and let's just put in webcam 920, click on OK. I've then got the option here to choose between uh, my FaceTime camera, hello, or I can choose my C920 camera, hello, over there actually, and, and then you can choose the resolution. So for example, I could do, I could do that. So that's my C920. Uh, and then I can go down here to the sources and add another source so let's add my other webcam. I mean, this is going to look a bit silly, but uh, FaceTime camera. Uh, click OK and then go to my FaceTime camera and do that and move that over there. So you've got different cameras there. I Carry just want on. you to take a step back. So all of so the OBS allows us to grab content from all of these sources. So that could be a guest that you have on. It could be something that you pre-recorded that's on your desktop, all of these sources. I just want you to go into one more time to go into the settings to show them how they choose to broadcast this to Facebook so they can see what the payoff is. Yeah, of course. And yeah, if you want to bring in a guest, you would have to bring them in with Skype or Zoom. And then, um, and then share the, the window. Tool. Yeah. And then share the window. So here know, it is. This it's... is what I want to talk about. So we, when Ian goes to stream there, this is where, once you've determined all of this, you choose where it's going to go. And yeah. then when you choose Facebook Live, it'll ask you for credentials so you can choose which of your uh, Facebook Live feeds it's going to go to. So that's easy to do that from your page. On your profile, it's a bit more tricky. Uh, and on that blog post that I create, uh, the wrote, it's, there's a little button on there you can click to get the stream key for your profile or group uh, for OBS Studio. So it is possible, but it's a little bit more, there's a few more steps involved. So we go from free to nearly a thousand dollars to <laughs> Wirecast. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. So there's Wirecast. There, there are other tools out there which we we don't need to go on talk about necessarily. There's XSplit for PC. Uh, but yeah, Wirecast is is cross platform. It's available for Mac and PC. Let me just close down OBS now and let's load up Wirecast. So Wirecast used to be five hundred dollars and Unfortunately, they upped the price relatively recently to 695 as the base price. They do also have a pro version, which is $1,000. Yeah. I think for most people, the, 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 the studio version is more than enough. Uh, for It's, it's going to be fine. And I really like Wirecast. It, it does have a steeper learning curve than some of the other tools. Um, but it, it's more of a professional level tool. Uh, it, there's a lot more it can do. You can do things like multi-streaming. You can stream to lots of different ones at the same time. Just by going to output, output settings, you'll see here, I've got Facebook there. I can add loads of different uh, tools that I could, I could go live to Vimeo, YouTube, and I could go live to all of those at the same time if I have a really very, very powerful computer and an insane upload speed. <laughs> yeah, you've got to have a, you've got to have a really good internet connection. So when you talk about a pro tool, when I first saw Wirecast, I basically it, it's the same as what I saw in the control room when I was doing my television show all of the time. Uh, you see, I mean, t down to the professional aspect of you've got a preview screen where you compose and plan what your next shot is going to be, and then you switch that over. You can see there's a little arrow down in the bottom of Ian's scene there, screen there that allows you to take what's in your preview, what's staged next to be broadcast, and then send it over into the live broadcast. So for example, uh, small production like cable companies, local cable companies can actually use this tool to broadcast a local sporting event with multiple cameras feeding in. You could do all of it. It's got the capability to do that sort of stuff. But the key for us is while those technical capabilities are there, it, it, it does have the ability to take this content and send it into all of the different live streaming formats that we're talking about in today's in today's webinar. So it's a it's a super high end tool and geeks love it. I'm not surprised that it's become one of your favorites, Ian. Uh, but you also probably take a certain amount of pride in having tamed this beast. Yeah, it, it is. 
there is a learning curve, but there, there is with these high end tools that there's always going to be a learning curve. But once you've got it working and you've got the show set up, so this, this is for my, my weekly show. It's all set up. I've got all the, I've got the pre-show shot there, the titles, split screen, and then the ends shot as well. And I can, I can bring in multiple guests even share my smartphone as well so using an app such as reflector 2 i can bring in my my smartphone and, and give a demo on uh, on that so it, it is really cool but yeah i'm not gonna lie it is there is a learning curve um but it's worth it in my opinion yes absolutely and it's right at the very at the very top end and we we've i use it as well for for some of my projects but uh you know you know actually just as a, a complete aside ian the biggest challenge that I have, the only time I've ever had issues with it, is audio setup. Sometimes yeah. the the audio can be a little bit confusing or a little, um, uh, a little temperamental at times. I, I wonder whether part of that is the Mac issue. I yeah. think it's a little bit easier on PCs, and and I will say, you know, when you're getting to this level, although you know, I, I mean. I, I'm a very happy Mac user, but I have a lot of love for PCs as well. And I think at this level, it starts to be more economical uh, to to go to think about a, getting a PC, uh, looking at maybe buying a gaming PC because they they tend to have the very high specifications. And you'll probably find it's actually going to be more straightforward and easier to use on the PC. The the, the audio will work um, probably a little bit easier, um, yeah. and you you just get a probably better results. And there are some other apps out there. I mean, the, the, the other one that I will mention in passing, which I'm going to be looking at in more detail myself, is vMix. Now, vMix has been around for ages, but it's the kind of, it's the it's only for PC and it's an alternative to Wirecast. And that goes from free up to $1,200. And that, a lot of the, the, the high level uh, live broadcasters like vMix because it makes particular good use of your, graphics card so if you've spent hundreds or thousands of dollars on a really high-end graphics card vmix apparently makes better use of the the graphics card and you get some really really good results with that so i, I mentioned that in passing ian this has been a terrific overview of the tools involved in live streaming so what we're going to do now is that we're going to we're going to wrap up this pre-record segment and we're going to get back in and we're going to start to answer what uh, what i'm sure are going to be dozens of questions live <laughs> ian so you want to turn on your mic and camera we are back, everybody, and I hope that that streamed as well for all of you. As it, it seemed to be going pretty well, Ian was flying away on the um, on his keyboard. Now, I just got to test your audio now, Ian. Hello. Oh, can you hear me? I can hear you here, but let's see if we can hear you here. Just a minute. Yeah, it's working. Hey, we have you back. Excellent. So we can actually have a conversation. That is superb. Good job. That that was a a, a little bit longer video than we normally do uh, on our on our hybrid videos, uh, but so much to cover. And actually, I I edited about half of it out. You might have, Ian probably went, wait a minute. I talked about something there, and but I actually edited that down to just kind of get to get, get get make sure it was information dense as possible. Uh, so, Ian, we're going to jump into the questions, and there's a lot of questions. We'll spend uh, about 15, 20 minutes going through questions to try and still get this done all kind of within the hour. Um, but before we do the questions, I do want to make sure that people – and this this was actually pure happenstance. Often when we when people come on as guests, it's because they're promoting something and about to promote something. And this was completely – this was actually just <laughs> just good timing. But you're starting a course on live streaming, and when does it begin? It's um, imminently, so it's it's uh, starts from the beginning of December. Okay, so if uh, April's going to drop the um, drop the link in for us, but just fill us in on what the course is and what people can expect from it. So it's interesting with live video. I, I've noticed this with some of the comments that a lot of people want to use live video, but there's a few barriers to this, and I kind of call I call the two the two main barriers is the fear and the gear. So part of it is the technical know-how. I mean, we've talked about tools, but there's you know microphones and all this kind of stuff. But getting that right, but in a way, I think for a lot of people, that's a bit of an excuse. The the main reason people don't do live video is the fear of getting in front of the camera, and so we're going to be looking at both of those things and and also other things like selling. Uh, that can be for some of us can be a little bit of a you know, it's been a struggle for me over the years, the whole idea of selling in front of the camera. So we're going to look at all of those things. And it's a hand-holding thing, really, of uh, going live in a group, in a private group, and uh, and uh, getting practice in to be able to launch your 
live show. So that's what it's all about. So it's it's live streaming, but really from a perspective of actually launching a live streaming product as opposed to just going live and live stream, but actually building a show the kind of the way that you've built your seriously social show. Well, yeah, it, it it can be. I mean, it does. I mean, I I do believe in a regular show. You know, that frequency is is really important because people, you know, people want to know when your next next going to be live. It, it builds that consistency. Uh, okay. But it doesn't have to be. It, it could, I mean, you can use you can use live video for, as a webinar, and you could do that as a one-off or every yeah. two or three months. So it depends on on what your strategy is. Okay, and so you've got a special offer for uh, for our friends because you're awesome, and they're awesome. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you if you head on down to the page, it the the link it actually puts a hundred dollars off the off the. Um, the cart automatically, so you don't have to put any yep. coupon codes in. Um, but this, this is, I mean, this is going to be. You, you basically get access to my Wirecast course and the OBS course. So if you're interested in those tools, you've got those straight away. Uh, and over the next few weeks, we're going to be adding new videos on, on all those different aspects I've talked about. And I've got some friends coming in as well, um, talking about. I've got some people coming in to talk about selling and multicasting to different platforms and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's kind of aimed at lo uh, all different levels. If you're a beginner, that's fine. If you're wanting to do some of the more advanced stuff, um, it's you've got that in there as well. Okay, we'll include a link in the email to follow up and uh, that course is available. So I'm good luck with it. I'm looking forward to hearing hearing some feedback on, on how it all pulls together and the timing was just perfect. So, and, and you actually kept the card open for a few days because you were actually closing off sales already. So. It's uh, so it'll we'll leave it. Uh, we'll we'll send out the email and all the links uh, in our follow up email. Thank you. All right, let us now. Uh, let me jump over here and grab questions because there was a lot of questions. There was a lot of conversation. Some pretty darn knowledgeable people in our community, as as I typically expect. Um, so I'm just going to go down here to the bottom, and I I know we've you answered a lot of these in uh, in in text. So. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that they're all done. I'm uh, going through Facebook Live. Is there a way to broadcast landscape rather than portrait mode? I use an. Uh, this is from Dan. I use an LG V30 Android, and nothing seems to work. I start in landscape, but even then, it always is a sideways view. Oh so, yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's. I mean, the thing is, uh, you got to just test these things. And Facebook at the moment, it's if it's. Been around Facebook Live has been around for a long time, but it still can be a little bit glitchy, uh, and it kind of depends. Sometimes Android users get things first. So actually, on my Android phone, I've actually got access to Facebook Live audio, but not on my iPhone. Uh, I've got on my iPhone, I've got access to the split screen, the ability to bring in guests on my iPhone most of the time. So yeah, my my advice is it's with the with the landscape, you've got to start in landscape first. Uh, and and then go and go live and also it, on android make sure you go to settings and change the i think it's the orientation mode make sure it's in landscape um and, and then start off with that and, and just test it out but yeah it, it can be frustrating yeah absolutely uh marge asks does the rogue lavalier mic work with the iphone 7 plus um probably not yes Oh, it does. Wait, it, oh, okay. It, 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 well, well if you have the adapter uh which i don't yeah, have currently. Adapter. so it's a lightning to audio adapter yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you, you need that, and, and, it, and it works. People were, people were posting. There was posts on that, so you can just do a search for lightning to what is it called? Lightning to. Well, I mean, it comes with a phone, so you should already oh. have it. I mean, it, oh, okay. it, it, it's it's just you know, it's the it's the. I mean, it's the really annoying thing about the iPhone Seven, which we won't get into. That it doesn't have a headphone socket, so you just use the adapter that Apple have very kindly given you, and then plug the Rode Lavio mic into that, and you're away. Okay. So C is asking, can you start with Facebook Live and then go back and edit the video? No, you can't. Well, so what you can do, if if you just do it from your, your phone or just uh, from Facebook itself, you once you've done it, you can then download the video and edit it. The downside of that is the quality, particularly at the moment, the quality is really not great. In my testing, even though I've, I've Facebook Live supports up to 720 or 1080p, it kind of downloads in about 320. It's really, really bad. So if you can use software like OBS, Wirecast, or Ecamm um, and record at the same time as streaming, you'll get a much better quality, which you can then edit later. So you can't, in answer to your question, once it goes live, once it gets posted to your profile or page, that's it. So you can't edit it. You'll have to then re-edit, download it, re-edit it, and then re-upload it. 
Okay. So Diane is asking, she was asking a question about the road mic that was being talked about. She's asking if it was one with batteries or without. Do you know? Do you recall? So it does, it does well, the one that I've got is is just the Lavio Plus a yeah, road. So the, yeah. So it there's no batteries. Um I did I mention the there's a little the little adapter as well that you can get. Uh that allows you to plug the headphones in as well. So you but there are many other uh microphones out there that so you can yeah. look at. So Frank's asking, does anyone know how to screen share on Facebook Live? I think we covered a myriad of ways of doing that within yep. the within the video. Uh, Steve, uh, was your portion recorded from your desktop? So Todd, uh, Todd asked, uh, the way that we recorded this is, is we did a Skype call. And uh, actually, I had Ian record in ScreenFlow his screen so that I would get a higher quality screen. And then I recorded the audio and the video portion. Uh, through Skype, uh, and then I edited them all together in ScreenFlow. So it was a little bit of a it was a little bit of a dog's breakfast pulling all the pieces together. I would have preferred <laughs> to have done a, uh, if I if I had it to do over again, just as a technique. Um, we were having bandwidth issues, so I wasn't able to record the uh, Ian's video live. And normally, what would happen is you could use a, 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 a Skype record, a Skype call recorder, and I could record each of our video streams separately and then compose them all together. But we weren't getting good enough throughput to to make that work for the day, whatever reason it was. I suspect it was Ian's crappy internet. Um, but <laughs> but uh, but I would have preferred to do that, and I could have made the video a little more engaging because I could have had Ian's face on it more as we were in the demo part. And that was that. That's the only thing that I kind of I would have preferred to have had. But it still was a pretty. I think it was a pretty darn good video as it ended up coming out together. Anyways, uh, Steve, I'm a Rotarian on Renfrew in Renfrew, Ontario. Our club would like to live stream our and record our meetings. Uh, what hardware and software do you recommend? Uh, well, Kent, uh, uh, pretty much uh, live streaming a regular meeting. You know, I would recommend a tool. You know, I would actually recommend a tool, kind of like, um, oh, not what, what is it? Uh, I've lost the name of the tool. Uh, the 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 Zoom, like the free version of Zoom. What's it called, Ian? Uh, oh well, there's I don't know. There's a few. There's there's Amazon Chime. There's no, one. No, no, no. There's, uh, a, there's the, one that we use all the time. Uh, oh, brain fart. It looks very much like Zoom. Four quadrants, typically. Or, or people in Windows, oh, it'll come to me. It's a free tool. Uh, gonna, I don't know. Somebody's going to put, put it in. <laughs> uh, April, April will tell. We used to use it in April before we bought a uh, before we bought a Zoom connection. But it's something like that. Or do you have another recommendation, Ian, for live streaming uh, a a meeting? Well, a lot of these, a lot of these tools are. I, I mean, I, I, I use Zoom. I mean, Zoom gets free up to forty minutes, but, but obviously, the live streaming is only available if you buy the webinar platform. So that's about forty. Oh yeah, appear in is appear appear dot in. Yeah. That's the one that I'd recommend. So, yeah. So you could. So I don't think appear in has live streaming, but you could then take that and use OBS or some other tool. And and then broadcast that to oh, to Facebook Live. If you're going to be broadcasting to Facebook Live, or you could just make it a Facebook Live. I mean, you could just basically, you know, have an iPhone set up. It'd be better if you had a, a microphone connected to the sound system, so you're getting proper audio. But Facebook Live, that stream would probably work just fine for you, Ken. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Marge is asking. I'm planning a new MacBook Pro purchase soon. What kind of configuration do I need to support live streaming? <sighs> Lots of yeah, memory. I mean, lots of memory. I mean, I, I, I'm feeling very poor because from last year, I had to, I went for the the high end Mac. It, it cost me a lot of money, but I think, as I said, get, get the go for one. Ideally, the if it's a MacBook Pro, go for one with the graphics card, which was only the 15 inch ones, yeah. and go for six, 16 gigabytes of RAM. I really, yeah. really recommend eight gigabytes. You're going to struggle. Yeah, yeah, 15 inches for sure. Uh, Carol says, I hope this question is okay for modems, a Mac user. What are some great modems to have for Xfinity, for as an example? Uh, oh, I, I think that you're talking about streaming or, or uh, online services. Xfinity is a, uh, I believe it's an ISP in the States, so it's not really a, something that we can speak to here. Uh, as far as wireless modems, uh, you know, having a good Wi-Fi set up in your house, you know, just a good Wi-Fi, uh, you know, a good high-end Wi-Fi Connectivity kit is is you know there's a lot of different choices there. I'm using the uh, although sorry? I was going to say it's best it's best to to for, for live streaming. I always recommend a wired connection because it yeah. It, it, you know, for example, in my office, I, I I into the house I have two hundred uh, 
200 megabits per second down. It's about 80, 80 up. But in my office, it's down to like five. It's ridiculous. Whereas if I plug in, I'm getting about uh, I'm getting about 12 or 15 up, which is pretty good for what live streaming. Good stuff. Well said. Uh, curious, uh, Kirk says, curious to know if there's any way to highlight comments during Facebook Live when using OBS Studio. So, yeah, you need to use the third-party tool for this. And there may be – I mean, I've been doing a lot of investigation about this. I I end, ended up making my own solution. So uh, if you're interested in that, just get in touch with me. I've just created a little free tool that allows you to – effectively, it sounds a bit geeky, this, but it, it creates like a, a green screen for your comments. And you overlay that onto OBS and cut out the green screen. And it, so you, it's, people see you and the comment below. Um, so it's a – a little Very tour. cool, and that's a good suggestion. You should make that a bonus for your course. You shouldn't give that away I for should. free. I... <laughs> Scott asking, what's the best setup to live stream from a conference with a professional camera and mic setup? Oh, so what, what? What is he asking there? I mean, any of these, any of these, uh, the higher end. I mean, you can use OBS. I know lots of people that are using OBS Studio for some very high quality productions. Um, yeah. And that gives but you the you option can, to stream into any platform that you want. Yeah, so I mean, o OBS allows you to do that. Yeah. Wirecast allows multicasting and vMix. Uh, so if you want to do multiple ones, then OBS, you can use that, but you need to use another tool such as Restream.io or Switchboard Live, which will take that stream and then multicast it out. Um, but yeah, it's wow. a big, powerful computer. And Wirecast vMix or one of those platforms. Wirecast or vMix for sure. Yep. And a big, powerful computer and lots of bandwidth. Yeah. Yeah. Upload, sp upload speed is really <clears> important. <throat> if you, particularly if you're going to be uploading to streaming to multiple platforms, it goes up exponentially. You need huge amounts of upload speed. Okay. Brenda's asking if uh, branding is part of the free plan on BeLive TV. I don't think so. Uh, no, no. So I, no. I answered that question in the chat. It's, it's okay. you have to pay if you want your, your logo and branding. Okay. Uh, next, uh, need for a team. Pick your plat. Uh, Karan who is asking, need for a team. Pick your platforms for chat. I tend to focus. Oh, he's just, it's a comment about Crowdcast. He's he's ha very happy with Crowdcast, which does uh, multicasting and has become a really popular live streaming platform. I believe Mike Stelzner is using it for his show, uh, yeah, but that's so one that we didn't talk about as a tool. But it certainly is a is a major contender in the space. I mean, it's like it's like Zoom in the sense that the the actual Facebook Live or YouTube you get at the end of it isn't the most amazing. It, it's kind of it's just pictures of you and your guests, and it's kind of black border, not any branding. Uh, but yeah. the quick Facebook Lives in the chat is great. Yeah, uh, Howard adds a comment that I just agree with. He says, "Unless in just about every situation, unless you are a super person, you want to, and uh, yeah. if you want to respond to comments, you have to have a second person." We teach that in our webinar course and all of our live streaming. I, I say you should always have a producer. I mean, Ian and I are working here, and April's in the back as well, making sure everything's going smoothly. So we absolutely agree with that. Lorna yes. asks, uh, "Can you use eCam on an iPad?" No, no it has to be on just, a Mac. On a Mac, yeah. Okay, John's asking if it's easier to shoot video in advance. He's talking about our webinar, I think, the way that we did it. And yes, we do like doing these hybrid webinars where I pre-record the uh, the demo section. And the reason I like to do it is a couple. One is uh, this the, the video feed that we can deliver on a pre-recorded piece because it's been uploaded to the web is a higher quality. But we also control the information density. And the meat of the webinar is always going to be delivered well. And as you saw even at the beginning of today's webinars, we had some audio issues. This way here, we'll make sure we get in and deliver content and value to the community. Community. So I do like these hybrid style of uh, webinars. It's the first time you've done one, right, Ian? Yeah. No, I'm excited about that. And I, I just to, to answer to, to answer that as well. Be careful with Facebook that the hybrid the hybrid style is is great. Um, you can absolutely do that. But Facebook do not want you to just put uh, to do a pre recorded video as you're live on on its own they, you can get into trouble for that if they i mean i don't know how they're going to find you find that out but if you are making it look like it's live when it's pre recorded uh, that goes against facebook's terms and uh, i know gary v did it last year he kind of got away with it but just be careful yeah and and when we are doing it it's not in the um in the in in, in the spirit of deceiving people into thinking that it's live because we're right up front about the fact that it's a pre-recorded segment. Uh, so, uh, so, but I'm also like with webinars, people are thinking of pre-recording them and then presenting them as live. 
we're totally yeah that's something that we find kind of abhorrent here at daughter tech it is the top of the hour thank you april she's let us know um so anybody who has to leave right now just a reminder that you will be getting a replay link uh from uh, us in a, a couple of hours after the uh, the webinar is over once i've had time to compose it and, and, and build it and i upload it to youtube you will get another uh we can send you a replay from webinar jam but then you have to watch it in real time i prefer to being able to watch the entire thing in kind of a speed it up mode you can go double speed on YouTube and get through all this stuff. And Ian's accent is really funny to listen to at double speed. I got to say it's, it's, <laughs> it's awesome to listen to it at double speed. So that'll be coming in. We'll also have a link to Ian's course uh, if you are interested in that. And uh, so, yeah, so that'll be on its way out to you. Next week's webinar, I don't think that we've put up the link yet because I was I was vacillating on the topic, but I, I think we're going to, I'm happy with the topic now. We're going to be talking about calendars next week, about especially Google Calendar and using Google Calendar at the heart of your time scheduling system and google timing is perfect because google's just released a refresh of google calendars we'll be looking at some of those new features so we'll be back to productivity next week as we talk google calendars uh so i gotta thank ian for his time uh, we're gonna keep going but anybody that does have to leave right now uh till next time have fun storming the castle ian uh we, we're gonna continue banging through the questions here we should be hmm. able to get them done and i'm looking about 10 15 minutes Are you okay for that long it's That's not fine yeah it's close to your bedtime. No, 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 no. I'm gonna, to I'm bedtime. gonna go down for, gonna go down for some more food in a bit. But uh, oh, good, good. Fine. Some no, it's, only, it's, only, it's only seven o'clock, so it's fine. Oh, it's not bad for you. Okay, uh, JD is asking me how I like the AirPods for monitoring. Uh, actually, the reason I'm using the AirPods right now is I'm not monitoring the YouTube feed. I'm actually Ian and I are on a voice call at the same time as we're doing this, <laughs> and so we as we cobble together a system that works. Uh, I like the AirPods a lot, uh, but they're not ideal for everything. Um, for example, take them on a flight, and they're too quiet uh, in an airplane. They don't have enough volume, and so I can't use them on an airplane. I end up using my – I've got Bose noise-canceling uh, uh, e earphones that are in-ear. They're the molded in-ear ones that I use when I'm on flights, but they're really great for going for walks. and for as, as Being married to an iPhone, the AirPods are really nice. Uh, they're, they're pretty convenient. I do like them. Ian thinks that it looks like you've got dental and you like toothbrushes stuck in yours. But I I like how my beard I like how my beard covers them up and it's harder to see. You, you get away with it, Steve. I can get away with it. You could get away with it too if you grew a man beard. Okay. I could. Is two megabits per second okay for uploading and streaming? Filter I think asks. you're gonna struggle. Uh, yeah. I know some people in Australia where we 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 had like two megabits per second, and you can get away with it. You have to Turn Depending on the tool off. you're using, you have to kind of turn everything off and also reduce the quality. You, you're probably not going to get away with 720p to Facebook. You're going to have to go down to 480. So, yeah, play around. Mm -hmm. If you're using a tool like OBS or Wirecast, you can change the settings to change the, uh, the settings down a little bit. Uh, Ernest asks, uh, would Webinar Jam with three presenters work fine from your experience? Uh, from a regular MacBook, or is it really necessary to go for the more expensive MacBook Pro? Uh, I think you're going to struggle with your... I think a regular MacBook is not going to be ideal for any webinar delivery. Uh, for the most part, you're going to want a little bit more horsepower. Uh, but the only way to know is to test it. Um, so Ernest adds, so yes, my fear is the gear. You know, if you're doing a lot of webinars... I recommend not even using a notebook, but getting a, you can find an old Mac Pro, one of their old cheese graters, uh, like a, a, a Mac Pro 3.1 or 4.1. You can find those for four and $500 online everywhere. They're noisy, they're big, they're cumbersome, but they are workhorses and they mm -hmm. are fantastic for delivering webinars from. Uh, so I really recommend people look at that direction there. And that's a lot cheaper than buying a MacBook Pro if you don't need the MacBook Pro for everything else. Uh, and then you can stay with the same MacBook. Just a, a point of consideration uh but it, anytime you're compressing video and uploading it and streaming it up you want that discrete graphics card is going to be a big advantage so a macbook pro is probably the way to go it doesn't matter the number of presenters you have on by the way it's 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 all about your feed it's their computer and their bandwidth that's going to determine how how well they're incorporated in the overall webinar delivery so i hope we answered that well thanks ian great answer um <laughs> ian who, who makes your headset mic combination Oh, he's that's his phone one that he's wearing. But go ahead, Ian. Well, this. I mean, this is this is a cheapo. I don't even know what it is. It's uh, it's just a generic one I got from Amazon. So um, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it really. I, I'm uh, it's kind of all over the place. But yeah, just search Amazon for Bluetooth headset. Yeah, find something. 
Uh, John saying, could it also be the brand of phone and not so much Android versus iPhone? Not too sure. Oh, as far as uh, as far as the, uh, I, I'm wondering if he's referring back to that uh, portrait landscape thing. Uh, I'm not sure. I think you know. One thing I will say is that Facebook, you know, Facebook give different features to different groups of people, and you might just be in that buggy kind of that they've given that feature to to you, unfortunately. So as I said before, I've got Facebook Live Audio on my Android phone, but not on my my iPhone. So. I don't know. Just just test it out. Um, you could try a different device and see if it works on that, if you've got access to one. Uh, questions from Betsy and Peggy kind of fold one into the other. Betsy's asking, will uh, will your video stay in Facebook like a podcast? And then Peggy's asking how you download a Facebook video. And the answer to that is, yes, the video will stay in Facebook. It's it's stored as a video on Facebook. And from your account, you can download it. I'm not, there's just a, there's a pretty obvious download link, isn't there? Well, uh, yeah, it's a bit, you click on the video and then you've got the three little dots on the right. You click on that and then say, then you can download the video. As I say, the quality isn't always great. And you've also got the choice. You don't have to, What once you've, the live video ends, you, you don't need to keep it on there. You can um, choose not to. And I know some, I know like, for example, churches and, and other events that are live streaming, they will actually delete the video because they have a license for to play the copyrighted music live, but not to have it uh, afterwards. So just, Good point. just be aware of that. Yeah, so you can do that. Uh, Roberta says, so ScreenFlow doesn't work for live stream? No, ScreenFlow is a, is a video editing and re screen recording tool. Uh, so it's not really designed for live stream. We do end up using it in our live streams because we record all of our the the, the hybrid part of the video, the part that we broadcast, the pre-recorded part, and then we compose that into a video, upload it. And so we've used ScreenFlow for composing it, but it doesn't actually play a part in the actual live broadcast. And actually, interestingly, uh, Wirecast now has a lot of screencasts ScreenFlow, sorry, features they've they've because it's the same company and they've taken quite a lot of that into Wirecast. So you could use Wirecast or OBS as a some screencast uh, software as well. Yes, you can. Bruce asked, I like this question. How do you feel about the benefits of higher quality equipment? Is it really beneficial using HDMI cameras when outputting to Facebook? Uh, you want me to answer this one? Uh, well, <laughs> I, I, I yeah, I, I think the most important thing is if, if you're using this as an excuse. To, to because you, you're actually scared in front of getting getting in front of the camera, then you just need to do it. I'm a big I'm a big believer in bootstrapping this. So start small. I started off with just my C920 camera. I didn't have any decent lights. I then upgraded my lighting. The next thing for me will be getting a, a, a camera and an HDMI capture card. But I I'm I wanted to actually just communicate my message to my audience. So do that first. Then, yeah, I think things like uh, the camera and lighting do make a big difference. Uh, but ultimately, it's your message and get you getting in front of the camera that's important. In order of hierarchy of getting better gear, audio first. Spend yeah. it, it, Until you've got great audio, don't bother spending money anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, a Logitech C920 webcam is what I use, is what so many of us use. Mm. It's the quality is is there, especially if you the, the next place to spend money after your audio is in lighting. Get good quality yeah. lighting. Once you've got good quality lighting, then you can look at upgrading your camera. But I've tested out a lot of HDMI cameras, uh, and um, I'm happy. With them. I keep going back to the Logitech. You know, it's it, yeah, it's, it's correct. Good, yeah, yeah. But they're definitely, great. but definitely, quality makes a huge difference in microphones makes a big difference in lighting. And as far as Facebook Live and streaming live goes, it makes a little bit of difference in the video camera. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with that. Okay. Uh, April's asking for the link to, uh, Peggy's asking April for the link. It's, it's, not, it's not April's fault, it's my fault, Peggy. I have, it'll be the link to register for next week's webinar will be in the emails going out. Any recommendations for lighting from Doug? Uh, you know, just any of the lighting kits on Amazon are good uh, continuous lighting kits. I've got right now, I've got umbrella lights with just the fluorescent bulbs, uh, that are, that are, uh, 5,500 Calvin or daylight lights. Um, but I'm actually going to be buying, doing a lot on this in the new year or late in the new year, because we're moving offices. I'm moving houses in ja December 21st, Ian, can you believe it? Yeah, we're moving yeah, houses. Yeah. And I'm in my office is going to be much smaller, so I'm getting rid of my umbrella lights. I'm going to flat LED panels, which are more expensive but far more compact. Uh, but there's a the, uh, the upgraded lighting is you can get it for like a hundred dollars on Amazon. It's yeah, it's, you don't have to spend too much. 
I, I I went for these. The uh, this this is, I don't know if you can see, but this is the newer. Um, this is the 480 LED oh, yeah, set. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now they're not they're not cheap, but it was my birthday recently, so I decided to get this. And oh, the thing I, I like about it is that it's it's it doesn't take too, too much room in my office, and yeah, the quality is pretty good. So I like yeah, it. that's that's actually I'm looking at those for for my office as well. Good stuff. Any options for back? Drops for video work, a messy office, a nice screen. Well, I use a green screen to block off the office uh, or just have a good setup, you know. But the, these pop-up green screens are, again, around $100. Mm. They're really nice. And it's just a – it's just they're they're 9 foot or 8 foot by about 4 foot, and they're just on a stand. Actually, my office is a mess behind because I'm getting ready to move, so I've been just – I've just emptied out all of my filing cabinets, and we're getting rid of all of the old documentation we don't need. So it's <laughs> – but you can't tell because it's all nice and green. <laughs> Ian, I think we've reached the end of the messages and questions and on time. Every one of these webinars comes in at an hour and 15 minutes. It's like clockwork. Boom. Just like that. That's great. One more time. April, uh, can you drop in the link to Ian's course so people can know about it? And we're going to wrap things up. Ian, thanks so much, buddy. This was a, this was awesome. It was, it was what I expected. Ah. It was great fun. Thank you for having me on. It's just uh, great to geek out and talk about live streaming. And yeah, it's been great. So make sure you're following Ian on all the live platforms. Your your website is uh, is IAG. Is it IAG.me? IAG.me. Yeah. Yeah. And you can get, so follow Ian there. Make sure you follow him on Instagram. Any of you folks go into social media marketing world, Ian will be there and I will be there. Last year we sang together in a yes. musical in a musical spectacular at the opening, which surprised the heck out of everybody. We did. Uh, we the did video is somewhere. Of, we did a send up of the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I was the Cowardly Lion character. Oh, uh, the video is out there. You should uh, send people yeah, to it. Yeah, uh, we, <laughs> I, I did include it. In, yeah, it's last year. And apparently, we're doing something this year. I've, I've, the word is that we're doing another musical number. So, oh, well, let's, warm up the let's see. Ian, Ian is a trained <laughs> opera singer. I was at my daughter's concert. My daughter, my daughter's recital last night. My daughter's also studying classical voice, so it's it's near and dear to my heart. Listen, you were great, Ian. It was a it was a pleasure to have you on. It was exactly what I was hoping for. I know the community really appreciated it. So, uh, from all of us here, thanks so much for your time. We 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 do appreciate it. Uh, April, thanks for the, your help in the in the room. To everybody that contributed in the conversation, the discussion, we 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 thank you all very much for that. Uh, Till next time.